Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we will cover Bed Bath & Beyond, trading under the ticker symbol BBBY. The market has been very volatile recently, especially for BBBY, and with many equities having huge swings up and down, many people are interested in the stock because of the potentials those volatilities could provide. So in this video, we will take a look at the stock from a technical and fundamental perspectives and determine what would be a recommended action to carry out for BBBY. Over the past five days, the stock price of BBBY has decreased by more than 16%, and the previous momentum we had is now entering in a pause for the time being. Over the past month, the price has increased by more than 30%, and led us to believe that we might be able to see BBBY testing the $6 price, and eventually even thinking about the $10 price. Eventually, the traders will have to decide whether they want to continue on a bullish trend or to reverse back to a sell-off mode. The current support level suggests that the stock may have a long way to fall, below which we would truly go into the bearish trend. Very bearish, in fact. From a historical perspective, it may seem as a great buying opportunity, but since BBBY operates without the assumption of going concern, I would recommend to be careful about the overall situation while keeping in mind that the stock is currently enjoying upward momentum that may provide opportunity. So Bed Bath & Beyond BBBY, is a home goods retailer. It was founded in 1971 and headquartered in New Jersey. It has shops in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. So the company has a wide range of products for home, including bed, bath towels, kitchen electrics, cookware, window treatments, and so on. They have a lot of home decor, giftware, and housewares as well. It operates both physical stores and e-commerce platforms, um, giving customers like a wide range of options to shop in their stores. One of the key strengths of BBBY is its strong brand recognition. So the company has a, you know, a decent reputation for offering a wide selection of high quality products. And this over the years has definitely attracted a loyal customer base. The brand recognition also helps the company to successfully expand into new markets. So, so far we've talked about Canada and Mexico. You know, one day maybe we can talk about Europe or Latin America as well. Another strength of the company is its diversified business model. So, in addition to the core retail businesses, it also operates the brands and businesses like Christmas Tree Shops, Harman, Bye Bye BAB, and One King's Lane. So these diversifications can also help, at least on paper, help the company to mitigate the risks and to generate stable revenue streams. Now, BBBY has been successful in developing strong relationships with suppliers as well, with timely payments and maintaining those relationships over years of collaboration. In recent years, though, the company has been facing some rough challenges, especially in the face of increasing competition from e-commerce giants like Amazon. Not that they don't also partially benefit from it, but what I'm trying to say is their competitors are legion, and the, the consumers for those kinds of goods are limited, especially in times of recessions. Additionally, the company has struggled with declining foot traffic at its physical stores, leading to falling sales and earnings. So to address those challenges, they have tried to focus on the e-commerce side of the business. They've been working to improve the websites and mobile apps, making them more user-friendly and personalized. They're also focusing on store closures and cost-cutting measures. The company has closed down many underperforming stores over time and also laid off a certain number of its workforce, closing down distribution centers and consolidating the supply chains. So those measures are designed to help controlling the cost, therefore increasing the net income. With that being said, it still remains under significant sell-off pressure due to company-specific and macroeconomic factors. So the main reason why people might be interested in the stock to begin with might be the stock market price action rather than the fundamentals. And I would like to comment on this. Basically, this is another one of those the company might not be doing so well, and there are structural reasons for it, right? Especially in this case, it kind of reminds me of GameStop. So GameStop is a company that 
sells games in the retail world physically. Now, this like screams red flags. So it's the same case here. If we're talking about soaps and bath products, these are the kind of stuff that people don't need to, you know, to to go outside of their door in order to buy them. So having a lot of stores is kind of a weakness at this point, especially when people are kind of used to get things delivered at their doorsteps. I'm not saying that BBBY are not making efforts in that sense, but there are heavy trends that are not in their favor. So really, it's one thing for them to make the effort. It's another thing whether they're going to succeed. And it's even another thing, so like a third thing, about whether people can find BBBY attractive. It could be because the company has a very high short squeeze potential. It could be because people think that, well, volatility will create additional volatility. So therefore, in other words, if the stock has fallen by like 95% in a day, you know that there will be mechanical like recoveries the next day or over the next few weeks. So in this case, I believe that this is what a lot of people are hoping for. They're hoping for this kind of non-fundamental uh, price movement in their favor, meaning up. So with that being said, let's also talk about its ownership. More than 40% of BBBY's equity is owned by institutional shareholders, the rest being owned by retail traders. What this means is that while the stock has a relatively high volatility, and is also a potential stock to invest in for the long term, theoretically speaking. Um, in this case, though, because of the going concern issue, I wouldn't really put the emphasis on investing just yet. So one key behavioral difference between institutional and retail shareholders is their investment horizon. The former has a far longer uh, view on things, with a focus on a company's fundamentals, and the growth prospects. They're also less likely to engage in short-term trading and less affected by those volatilities. Retail, on the other hand, tend to focus more on short-term gains and more likely to make decisions on a whim. In this case, because 60% of the shareholders are retail, what this also tells me is that it's going to be a volatile stock and people are going to buy the stock or sell the stock on a whim. We want this to, for our trading um, scenarios, but I wouldn't say that this is necessarily great for people who want to put the money in in the long term. In fact, don't put your money in BBBY for the long term because there might not be a long term. I'm not sure if this company has a guaranteed going concern. So in this context, I would not recommend to invest in the stock, but to mainly consider the stock for its trading opportunities. One of the key catalysts that might explain the retail interest in BBBY is also, like I've mentioned before, the short squeeze potential. Due to significant short positions against it, there are currently around 73 million shares being shorted off exchange, representing 55% of the short volume. This can support the theory that there is a concerted shorting operation from institutional short sellers against BBBY because of the fundamentals mostly supporting this outlook. I consider that the short position size can be significant and that this can indeed play a major role in sending BBBY's price action to a much higher level. The takeoff would be unrelated to the company's fundamentals, but simply due to a supply and demand game. It also tends to be a self-fulfilling prophecy once buyers pile in. Now, it's also important to note that the short interest is not a guarantee of a short squeeze, but it's a metric worth monitoring for investors. It's also worth wondering that the short sellers may have valid reasons for their bearish sentiment, and a short squeeze may not happen. Given the situation, I would recommend to wait for the current sell-off to end, while keeping in mind that BBBY has a fundamental uncertainty about its future and this may keep hovering around the stock for the foreseeable future, like a sword hanging above its own head. With that being said, the short-term volatility should still provide enough opportunity for the risk-tolerant traders, as long as the holding period is for the short-term swing trading and not for the long-term investment. The maximum exposure I would recommend for BBBY 
would be 1% of your portfolio, which would be spread over several weeks.